What's going on, Bully Fam? As the title says, we're gonna be showing you guys how to draw some blood. So as a dog breeder, this is really essential and key because especially if you're gonna be doing your own progesterones, um, your own relaxing test to confirm pregnancies, all that kind of good jazz, you need to know how to draw blood um, properly where you won't harm your dog, you won't hurt your yourself, um, things like that. So this is gonna be, I, I haven't done an episode like this like in a year, so this is gonna be a refresher with some new tips and tricks on how to draw blood from your dog, so. Stay tuned. What's going on, Bully Fam? It's your boy, the educator, the scientist, Mr. Double Muscle Line Bulls, bringing you another episode of Breeders Hacks. So, as I was saying prior, um, being able to draw blood is humongous and key. I haven't done an episode like this in, in quite some time. So um, I have some new tricks, some new tips, um, things like that, that will be able to help the average breeder be able to feel more confident being able to draw blood. So, um, I mean, let's get started. So before I actually get hands on and start showing you guys um, step by step how to draw blood, um, there's a few things I want to go over with you guys, which I think will help um, tremendously um, when starting to draw blood. Because the way I was taught, I wasn't taught like with these things I'm about to show you guys right now. I was taught with there was a dog in front of me, draw the blood. And I mean, I was <laughs> sweat coming down, nervous. I was afraid I was going to hurt the dog, afraid I was going to hurt myself all kinds of stuff like that. So now um, with these things I'm gonna show you guys, um, I, I do think if I would have had them back then, <laughs> um, it would have been an easier transition for me because being able to draw blood, it's like, it's, it's, it's a taboo for most people, you know? We're used to maybe getting our blood taken or blood drawn, but being able, able to do that on another, um, you know, living creature, um, on an animal, um, that's, yeah, I mean, not many people are used to that. So anyway, one of the things I'm gonna show you guys is this packet right here, right? Maybe I have it upside down. But um, I bought this on Amazon, right? And it's called um, Mature Deck or whatever. I'm just gonna hold it up in front so you guys can see. I'll put the link to where I got it down below in the description. But what's so cool about this is this is actually um, a test kit for being able to draw blood. Um, let me just show you guys what it is real quick so you guys can see. So. I bought this for educational purposes to be able to teach um, a fellow breeder. And I figured, hey, I show it to you guys. So basically what it is, is it's fake skin um, with some tubes in it that are artificial veins, I guess you would say. And what it allows you to do is really just practice drawing blood. So the veins are empty, obviously. Um, there's no liquid in the veins or anything like that. And as you can see on the sides, there's these tubes right here. So you could actually see where you're puncturing. So if I put the syringe, say I have a syringe like this, and I go ahead and you know puncture into the vein, you would be able to see if I missed it or not. So from a visual standpoint, you can see you know, where, if you're hitting the vein or if you're not, and those are highlighted in green. Um, I think all these kits, there's different ones. So what I was able to do is there's two veins that are now inner on the inside of this um, fake skin. So what it allows you to do is they're obviously yet again empty, but what I did was I took some, some water with red food coloring and put some inside one of these veins. Uh, I took the syringe, poked it inside the vein, you know, let the food coloring in. So now, for example, if I was to be practicing to being able to draw the blood, you can see, I don't know if you guys can see, the vein is actually sticking out a little bit because it has the liquid in it. So. Let's see, so I'm gonna take my syringe, and this is just as practice. Go ahead and see, and oh, there we go, look at that. And all the liquid stayed inside the artificial skin and allowed me to go ahead and take the blood right out of the vein and just practice. So this is a cool little thing. I'm not gonna go super crazy into detail. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to draw blood um, later when I have my um, test dog to show you guys. But this is a cool little thing you can take and practice and learn how to draw blood with. Like I said, you have the two that you can visually see from this angle if I'm putting the syringe in and you'll see the um, syringe through the little fake veins as well as you can take some liquid, put it into one of the fake veins that are inside the artificial skin that are, are not visible, you can't see from this side. And um, like I said, hey, draw yourself some fake blood and there's some practice for you. So that's something really, really cool 
that, like I said, I wish I would have had when I was starting, um, allowed me to practice feeling for the vein and things like that. So like I said, some fake skin, Amazon, I think it would paid like 25 bucks, something like that. Really, really cool. Next thing, um, I, I, this is like a visual diagram to be able to show you guys what it's like when you're drawing from the dog's vein, right? So what I wanted to show you guys is just essentially that this is how the vein basically sits on the dog. So what can wind up happening is when you're, when you're drawing the blood from the dog, it sits on the arm like this. So you can easily actually wind up going through, say I bring the syringe in and I'm going at an angle, the syringe could theoretically go through the vein and be on the other side. So you might see a little bit of blood in your syringe and say, hey, what? Why am I not really getting any blood? It may have been because you nicked the vein. You just you passed it. So I just think this is a great way and a great diagram for most people to look at and say, okay, oh, this is how the vein sits on the arm. So what you're gonna wanna do is the sharp side facing downwards and the circular side facing upwards. That's what they call the bubble. And you'll go in like this. Now, what can happen is, as I've said, if you go too far in, too far into the um, vein, you'll pass it. If you go too far to the right, too far to the left. So this is a good explanation of how you're looking for the vein. And what I'll do is I'll put my thumb down so that the vein doesn't like roll over on the arm or anything like that. So I got everything still, the vein isn't gonna move because that can happen as well too. You're holding, um, you're holding the arm like this and you go ahead and try to, you know, um, uh, take the blood from the vein and you can essentially um, actually be like rolling the arm a little bit and missing the vein completely. So I think this is a good diagram. If you um, do this yourself, make this yourself. Um, I mean, essentially you could take like a little plastic tube that was maybe filled with some water or something. And I mean, this is great do at home diagram as well. Like I said, bubble up, syringe, um, pointy side facing down, and you'll wanna go at an angle. And that's how you'll go ahead and, and, and draw the blood from the vein. Now, as I've said, you can pass it. So this is a great way to just kind of look at it and be mindful of, and, and this is how it's basically essentially gonna sit on the dog's arm. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go grab an actual dog and just show you guys real quick so then you guys can see. But um, this is also another great way to practice as well because this is exactly how it sits on the dog's arm. And with the tourniquet, it's gonna allow to restrict some blood flow so that the vein will be sitting a little bit higher and it's a little bit more visually easier to see. spray on deck. I like having my own spray on deck. This is the one that we use, the Vetricin or something like that. You can get on Amazon and you're going to want to have your syringes. So you'll go ahead, take a syringe out. Some of them already have the needles on them, some don't. So I'm just going to go ahead, throw a syringe on like this, take the syringe and tighten it on the top so that it locks in. That's why they call it a, a lure lock. So um, we're going to go ahead now and we'll have also our tourniquet so that then it can kind of raise the vein for us. It stops a little bit, I believe, like the circulation just so that it raises the vein high enough. So anyway, let's get started. Come here, Mercy. I have my uh, older time female that um, uh, she's, she, she's just so easy going. So it's going to make this a one, two, three kind of thing. So if you come around actually and look at her arm. So as you can see, you're gonna grab her arm, right? You're gonna grab the dog's arm and you're gonna like do a loop with the tourniquet around her arm. You're gonna wanna go as high up to where the elbow is as possible. And you do, like I said, you just go up and over, pinch it kind of tight, and then take the piece that we went over with and bring it up under. And now it's almost as if we created a, t a bow tie or something. Cause once we're done, we can pull this and, in, and it'll come right off. So now, as you can see, it's restraining um, a little bit of the vein, a little bit of the circulation, so that then now the vein is raised. So now what we're gonna wanna do, let me bring her closer, as you can see. Now what we're gonna wanna do is, I can kinda see the vein right here, but one thing to troubleshoot for, for breeders that are having a hard time finding the vein, is you can go ahead and actually take some spray. I got the wound spray right here. She's not a fan of this. 
but as you can see now you can see the vein a lot better and a lot easier because it's wet and damp one other thing that you can do come here mama one other thing that you can do is you can actually um shave the area as well but since i can see it pretty well i'm going to go ahead grab my syringe and what you're going to want to do is make sure that the bubble as i said is facing upwards just like how it is now so you want to just make sure their head is out of the way and i hold my thumb here so that the vein does not roll to one side or the other so now you go ahead and grab the arm with the bubble facing up if you can zoom out for a second and see what i'll what i'll have is i'll have my pointer finger and my thumb holding the syringe and then my my middle finger pushes the slider back and then or 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 my ring finger will pull the slider back plunger i'm sorry so now we'll go ahead and do bubble up go ahead and bring the syringe in like this there we go as you can you're gonna look for blood coming into the, the the very very top part right here where the syringe is once you see red in there you know you're golden then when we're done put your thumb over where the syringe is pull the syringe out make sure it's capped i'm gonna put that down for a second make sure it's capped now where that tie was that bow tie that we did we can go ahead and pull it and it comes right off it comes right off then you massage down to make sure that the um, so that you don't um so you don't collapse the vein and then she's done she's good to go you could spray wound spray on her if you want and then you could go ahead and take your syringe put the cap on it and that is it that's all you got to do and you can see we got a nice large about three cc's about two cc's and a half maybe of blood and that's all you got to do and that's pretty much it guys all right I hope this information was helpful. I hope it was useful. Drop a comment down below. Maybe y'all, you guys got a question, whatever the case may be. I'll definitely check it out. Um, it'll definitely help us with bringing you guys another new episode based off of you, what you guys put in the comments down below. So like I said, guys, hope it was helpful. Hope it was useful. See you guys on the next episode of Breeders Hacks.